Welcome back. Well, an Australian biomedical engineer has developed the world's first long-term artificial heart. Dr Daniel Tim's titanium heart works by using magnetic levitation technology. Instead of beating blood around the body like a normal heart, the invention is being developed to provide an alternative to organ transplants and is on track to be tested in humans in the US later this year. Dr Daniel Timms joins me now on the program. Thanks so much for your time, Doctor. I'm humbled uh, to be interviewing today and I've got to admit, I don't really know what it means uh, to have uh, uh, this operating differently to a normal heart. So please explain. Plane. Sure. Okay. So you probably imagine the natural heart, you can feel it and hear it beating uh, once a second, 100,000 times a day. And uh, generally what will happen is an artificial heart will be using, and traditionally we'll be using compressed sacs to reproduce that beating right. action. Uh, our approach is to do away with that and uh, um, really instead use a spinning disc, a rapidly spinning disc to pump the blood around the body. Right. So that's what magnetic levitation technology is. That's right. That, levitated, that disc is levitated with magnetic levitation technology, and that means that there's no mechanical wear. And that means that this device can last for a lot longer than any other artificial heart has been developed before. Right. OK, so how did you come up with this then? <laughs> well, during uh, my PhD program, like that's almost two decades, well, more than two decades ago at a QUT, and uh, just looking for different approaches for artificial hearts and essentially doing away with that traditional approach of uh, beating it like a, a normal heart and instead using this, uh, you know, levitated magnetic technology with a spinning, rapidly spinning disc, and just realising that uh, maybe the way that artificial hearts were built in the past isn't how we need to approach them in the future, and, and just looking for different approaches. Yeah, so there's a big step coming up, and that is testing in humans in the United States later this year. What kind of testing has been done uh, to date? Has it been tested in animals, for example? Yeah, well, one of our approaches here was developing total artificial heart is a pretty big medical breakthrough. So we took the device to the US and we're really going up against the FDA for them to give us the most rigorous way to test the device. And so that means that there's a lot of verification testing, including uh, a verification testing in animal studies uh, for us to then uh, provide the results to FDA and understand that the device is safe and ready to be implanted in patients. Right, so when, well, when we get to this trial in the US, What's the process then before this becomes mainstream, if you like? Sure. Uh, so we're undertaking uh, what's called a feasibility study for the device uh, mm. to test the device in, in the first few patients. And uh, once we identify how the device is operating, then we start to increase the uh, production of the device mm. and have it available for, for people worldwide. Why testing in the US? Is it much harder to do this kind of testing in Australia? Um, I wouldn't say that it's harder. Um, it's just a, a different approach, and, uh, and that just gives us a chance to also leverage the experts that are in the US who've been trying to do this de uh, development for more than 50 years. And, and so they've got a, a number of different approaches that they take to test these devices. Yeah. So we're leveraging that, that experience, and uh, really that came out of the Texas Heart Institute in Houston, uh, who implanted actually the first artificial heart in 1969. Uh, wow. So it gives us a chance to bring that uh, technology and, and knowledge back to Australia. Well, Daniel, your um, brain is as, as big as your heart. Um, how do you think this is going to help um, people? Do you think this could be widespread? Ultimately, you've done this to save lives. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the challenge with heart failure is that it affects, you know, um, what's the leading cause of death in the world? And everybody has some a story about somebody with heart failure. So developing a device like this means that we don't have to rely on donor hearts as being that uh, gold standard for heart trans uh, for treatment. We have a device that's off the shelf and can be used um, at any time for these patients and extend their life and allow them to go back to their families. Well, good luck and thank you. And thanks for giving us your time this morning. I really appreciate it.